So for you, come you come back to Houston, and then that one year, that first year after, what what did you say you were doing during that year? That first year after in seminary, I was working at the vocations office. Okay. Um, helping out there, and then also helping out at a parish, kind of doing both those at times. So I was with Father Dad again in the vocations office then, which was great. That's pretty cool how you're you're back with Father Dad now. <laughs> yeah, it is pretty amazing, honestly, how it worked out. So we did a lot of stuff with, I made a lot of videos that summer for the vocations office. Another buddy of mine is awesome with graphic design. Um, so he would, uh, he redesigned the website and took a bunch of pictures and Photoshop stuff. So it was a fun summer. Then after that, what happened? Then I went back to seminary for that second year. Seminary here in Houston. That was, um, the second year was in Dallas and the third year was back here in Houston. Okay, so yeah. after you're, you're back here in Houston, after that third year, what's the next step? Third year, well, not, another year. So I then I spent a summer in the parish, St. Faustina. Yes, okay. Which is great. I, okay. And then um, the fourth year in, um, fourth year at the, at the seminary here in Houston. And then after that is when you go into your pastoral year where you spend an entire year at a parish. And where was that? That was at St. Martha's in Kingwood with Monsignor Borski and Father Richard McNeely, which is interesting. Monsignor Mon- Borski was... Monsignor Borski was my pastor for a pastoral year. And that's so. cool how he's, you know, he's helping us out here. At it's Santa pretty Faustina. amazing that like Father Dad I was with at a parish, Monsignor Borski I was with at the parish, and now all three of us are priests together at a parish. I mean, it's kind of insane how God works. Yeah, that's amazing. And it's then awesome. Even, you know, uh, Deacon Joseph White, you were in the seminary with him, and then you guys catch yeah. up again here at the St. Faustina for a few weeks. Exactly. Or a few months. Like, yeah, was like four he was here months? for almost, almost three months. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was it's pretty awesome how God's worked it out. I just felt super blessed yeah, to be with Monsignor Borski and Father Dad and have Joseph here this summer. It was cool. And Deacon Houston, we were only in seminary a little bit together, um, the way things overlapped, but it's awesome to have him too. Um, but, and then also Father Richard McNeely was the parochial vicar, the assistant priest at St. Martha's, and he's the vocations director now. So it's funny because actually my my last year in seminary, so he was like the, the priest at the parish when I was on pastoral year, and we were in seminary together um, for a year when he was a deacon and then when I was a deacon, he was like my vocations director, which is wow. like really fascinating how it all works out. That is so you know? cool. So at what point do you get assigned to a parish? As a, as a, uh, for pastoral year. Okay. It, for pastoral year, yes. is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah. So they just kind of, you don't really know when you're going to hear it. Um, just sometime in the spring before you go, they just tell you like, Hey, you're going to this parish and then you start there in the fall. So you don't have any choice whatsoever. You can't give them a list of, uh, here's my number one choice, number two choice. No, I think they ask you like, what kind of parish do you think you want to be in? But I don't know if it's cause like they're going to put you in that parish or they just kind of want to kind of know where you're at. Okay. So after that year, what happens next? Yeah. So for me going into that year, honestly, I was probably like 50, 50 on discernment. You really? Know? Still? Yeah. So that was four years in going to my fifth year. And I just, I remember telling God, like, if, if this doesn't go well, you know, and I just don't feel a lot of peace about parish life. Uh-huh. Then like, I probably need some more time to figure How old this were you out at this time. So I was 22. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I said, Hey, if this is a good fit, you know, I feel a lot of peace about this. Then like, I think we're good to go. So, um, and it was just an amazing experience. It was so great to be with the people and all these incredible moments, you know, whether it was funerals, weddings, or just hanging out with the youth group, playing dodgeball with the kids at the school, you know, there were so many moments where I thought like, yeah, I could give my life to this. Like this would be worth it, you know? And, and you go from like in seminary, you know, you're celibate, right? You know, uh-huh. you're looking to like a whole life of celibacy and you want to give the Lord everything, but you're also kind of wondering like, who am I celibate for? You know, am I celibate to take this test? You know, like this doesn't really add up. And finally on that pastoral year, um, you know, being with the people, it was like, okay, these are, these are the people I'm going to be celibate for. Like these are the people worth, with giving my life to, you know? And so um, to kind of be able to see that and to have it be real, um, I came out of that year, year feeling very strong. Like, okay, I, I could do this with my life and um, let, let's keep going make it happen. So when you were at that point of being 50, 50, did you think, did, did you think, okay, well maybe I could be a deacon <laughs> that were you, were you kind of swaying between those thoughts? Um, being a deacon, I mean, you, you become a transitional deacon before you become a priest. Yes. That's kind of there, but, um, I never but being a permanent deacon, permanent deacon was never like a huge on my radar. Okay. I, again, like confessions and mass was like my main draw to okay. ministry. And as a, as a deacon, you can't do those things. So, um, that was kind of more my focus. Obviously, like if I was going to become a priest, marriage would have been, you know, huge on my radar. Yes. But. So 
at what point did you start going from being 50 50 to 60 40 70 30 what what point did you say this is it 100 yeah yeah now gradually throughout that year i would say it happened there wasn't like a specific moment um but there were lots of small moments where i was like wow like to be a priest is that's incredible you know and to see monsignor borsky's example and father richards and to see what they were able to do for people and to see how they were loved by the people you know it was very encouraging um so yeah lots of moments throughout that year when i just thought like hey I could give my life to this, you know? And so by the end of that year, I just wanted more, more time in the parish. I wanted to be with the people more. So coming back to seminary for that third year was really good actually. Cause it was like, okay, like we're, we're going to be in the parish again in a couple of years as a priest. So like, let's make the most of this time and mm-hmm. really focus on these classes and um, look, look toward like a bright future. So two more years, did you say? After yeah, two that? more years after that. One year just kind of as a seminary and then the last year as, as a deacon. Yeah, As a deacon. And and then you were a deacon. Where were you a deacon? I was a deacon at Most Holy Trinity Okay, um, in Angleton. And that was kind of cool too because the pastor there had actually been a seminarian on pastoral year at my home parish growing nice. up. Nice. Which was incredible. So like just like I did my pastoral year at St. Martha's, he did his pastoral year at St. Paul's in Nassau Bay when I was probably like 14. He played the, he's an awesome drummer, Father Victor Perez, played drums for retreats. And I was like, hey, this is a cool guy, you know? And so the fact that they assigned me to be like his, I mean, we have 150 parishes in the Archdiocese and 400 priests. Yes. The fact that I keep getting assigned with these guys who like I have kind of like a, you know, some, some type of like history with is pretty cool. Um, so that was a fun year hanging out with him and being a deacon there. Very different than St. Martha's. St. Martha's was about 6,000 families. Um, a lot of big stuff happening. This was about 1,500 families, a little bit smaller out in Angleton. But I loved that too. I loved the pace of that and getting to know people and being with Father Victor. So a huge blessing. Do you ever get to go back to those parishes? Yeah. So I said mass there a couple months after I'd been a priest, which was cool a couple times. Mm-hmm. Um, St. Martha's, I went and said mass there too, after I became a priest, went and helped on one of their retreats, the confirmation retreats a couple months ago. So, um, yeah, definitely trying to keep those, keep those relationships and those connections and give back to the people who did so much for you. 